Let me ask you a question today, my brother and sister. Would you like to receive more grace or less grace in your life? Tune into today's broadcast. We're going to teach you how to access more of God's grace and walk in it in your life. Welcome to Wisdom for Living with Greg Moore. Join with Greg as he shares truth from the Word of God that will help you grow in wisdom and successfully navigate a balanced life with family, marriage, finances, and relationships. And now, here's Greg. Welcome to another broadcast of Wisdom for Living. My name is Greg Moore. We are in a series called A Heart Established in Grace. Uh, how is your, where is your heart established in? What is, what's most uh, things, that, what is the greatest thing that fills your heart? Uh, man, I'm trusting that it's God's grace and even more of God's grace. In fact, that's what we're going to talk about today is more grace. So uh, let me share, share a funny, a couple of funnies with you. Uh, first one is the good news and the bad news. The wife said, I've got some good news and bad news for you. Husband said, well, give me the good news first. The wife uh, said, well, the airbags in my car work. <laughs> That's good news. The first guy said, my uncle ran for the Senate. Second guy said, what's he doing now? The first guy said, nothing, he got elected. <laughs> That's greatness. <laughs> The first guy said, well, I got a new job. I have 1,200 people under me. Wow. The second guy said, what are you doing? He said, I mowed the cemetery. <laughs> that is funny. I don't care who you are right there. That's funny. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So uh, James 4 and verse 6, it said, but he gives more grace. Now, this is powerful verse. He said, he's talking about God. He, God, gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. And so, man, this is what I want to talk about today is uh, how to access more grace. Now, Jesus is full of grace and truth. And when you're born again, you're full of Jesus and grace and truth. You have Him on the inside of you in your spirit man, but not necessarily in your, in your soul. And uh, we've, we've, in fact, in the past, we've, we've had a series talking about a prosperous soul. Well, here He's telling you uh, it's possible to have uh, received more grace. It's possible to access more grace. You can have more or less grace. And so uh, let me give you just a quick pop quiz. Which one would you prefer in your life? More grace? Less grace? <laughs> I'm trusting you would take the first one, more grace. And so I want to share with you three keys that I've learned from the Word that have helped me access more grace in my life. First of all, is revelation knowledge of Jesus. And this is powerful. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So here he's telling you, look, grace and peace, which they go together, they're multiplied to you through the knowledge of, of, of God and Jesus our Lord. So revelation knowledge of the word uh, when God when you're reading the Bible and God quickens a verse to you it makes he makes alive a live a, a, a verse to you or a passage of scripture and it just comes alive in your heart guys what that does is it draws out that revelation of Jesus draws out more grace that's how we receive more grace uh, Jesus was full of grace and truth. The more revelation knowledge that we have of Him, uh, in fact, in in a subsequent series that we're going to do on wisdom for living, we're going to we're going to talk about knowing Jesus. We're going to talk about uh, His character, His nature uh, that you have. But man, the the more revelation we have of Jesus, the more grace we're going to be able to appropriate. It's very powerful. 
So how many of you want grace multiplied to you? <laughs> I know I do. And again, I'm not saying that we're getting grace uh, imparted to us from the outside in. I'm talking about if you've got Jesus on the inside of you, you've got all grace, but appropriating it, accessing it, uh, receiving more of, of that grace, it comes through revelation knowledge of, of Jesus. And, and uh, when, when more grace comes, more peace comes. And we've already talked about the connection between, between grace and peace. The less peace I have, the less grace I'm going to be walking walking in him. Uh, our, our number one responsibility in life, my brother and sister, is to know the Lord, is to know his word. Uh, God doesn't have any grandchildren. And you, you cannot, um, you know, just ride the coattails of someone else's revelation. Uh, God, God doesn't want secondhand revelation for you. He wants you to have firsthand revelation. And he's hidden things, not from you. He's hidden things for you. And he's hidden it in his word. And there are no shortcuts. You cannot microwave uh, this walk of grace. And listen, guys, this is, this is the way we're to live. This is, not, this is not something I'm just teaching you that we, you know, that we kind of get a knowledge of in our minds and, and we say, you know, yeah, that's good to know. No, this is a life we live. He wants our hearts established in grace. That's what this series is all about, a heart established in grace. Well, it would stand to reason that if you have accessed more grace, your heart's going to be established in a greater measure in grace. And here he tells you it's revelation knowledge of Jesus. And so I, I encourage you, man, spend time in the Word. Read the Bible, not, not to... Uh, don't, don't go through the Word and just try to say, well, I've read so many chapters and you're trying to impress God and maybe you get a, you know, more stars on your attendance chart or your reading chart in heaven you know, for reading so many chapters in the Bible. That's not it at all. Just, God, reveal yourself to me. Show yourself to me. Uh, show you, reveal yourself to me as my healer. Reveal yourself and then... And, and when, you, when He does, then more grace is re released so that that healing manifests. Reveal yourself to me as my provider. Man, he, He's a good Father. He cares about you. He loves you. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 8 says, uh, said that uh, if a man wouldn't take care of his own, he's worse than an infidel. But God lives by that verse too. He's... God is not an infidel. He's your father. You, you are his own. He cares for you. Get a revelation of that, my brother and sister. And provision is going to flow into your life. Man, I'm just sensing that right now, that there's more grace being released to you right now because you're getting a revelation that your father loves you. He's not an infidel. He cares for you. He didn't just write that verse for you and me. He lives by that. You're His own. You, you, he, you belong to Him. He cares about you. He's not an infidel. He's going he's to manifest His abundant provision for you. If you'll just, Lord, make this real to me. I want a revelation of your, of your uh, care for me. Revelation of, your, uh, of who you are. Man, I'm telling you guys, you get a, the more revelation of Jesus that you have, the more you're going to see how good a God He is. And you're going to be, as I shared in, last, in the last broadcast, you, it's going to create an expectation of good every day. Man, I'm expecting good. I'm looking for, I'm looking for ways to be a blessing and I'm looking for God, uh, God blessing me and, and, in, and in me blessing others and and I'm expecting good. What are you expecting? Man, the more revelation of Jesus, Jesus you have, and the more expectation of good that you'll have, the more experience that you'll have of God's love and care, provision and health and healing and, and life and peace and all of these things that He has for you. And you know what? That'll extend your life. Praise God. 
It'll extend your life when you walk in peace and you walk in, you know, you walk in uh, the, this just an expectation of good. Man, I'm just just filled with, with a heart of God's uh, pleasure over you. He said it gives God pleasure. The prosperity of His servants give God's, gives God pleasure. How much more? His sons and daughters, you and me. If you have children, how many of you know you want your children blessed? You, you, want them, uh, you want them abundantly provided for. It doesn't bless you for your children not to be taken care of. Well, how much more? If you and I, being human, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more? Uh, Matthew 7, 11, how much more will your heavenly Father uh, desire to give, to give good things to you and me? Uh, God is a better parent to us than we are to our own children. And, and I'm just encouraging you guys. Um, you, you, God's not holding out on you at all. But you haven't seen, some, someone that's watching, you, you have not seen and, and placed the value on getting revelation from the Word yourself. And I'm telling you, if you'll just spend time in the Word and say, God, reveal yourself to me, I'm telling you, he, he will not hold out on you. you. You cannot seek God and seek His righteousness and not be blessed. This is, this is, this is powerful. You know, uh, Jesus is, is full of goodness. He's full of life. He's full of prosperity. He's full of healing. All of that is, is yours. And then 2 Peter 3.18 says, Grow in grace. So if we can receive more grace, and we can grow in grace. And that growth doesn't, we're not talking about in your spirit, we're talking about in your soul. Grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How do we grow in grace? We grow in our knowledge of Jesus. Man, I, I'm just, I'm releasing to you today passion to know Jesus like never before. The Apostle Paul said at the end of his life in Philippians 3.10, that I might know Him and the power of His resurrection, the fellowship of His sufferings, being conformed to His death. That doesn't mean we suffer the things that Jesus did on the cross or that we die the death He died on the cross. It, we're, 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 he's talking there just about suffering in the flesh and dealing with things in your life where your flesh is trying to take you a, a wrong direction. Man, knowing Jesus, that I might know Him at the end of Paul's life, that was his greatest prayer, that I might know him. Man, it, knowing him opens up doors for you, opens up revelation for you, opens up more grace to you. Grace is multiplied to you. Uh, you, you grow in grace through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The second thing that will help you access more grace, he talks about here in 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 uh, James chapter 4, and that is humility. He says in verse 6 again, He gives more grace, therefore He says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Wow. That, he gives more grace to who? Not to the proud. Not to those that say, well, I can do it in my own strength, in my own might. Those, are, those that have sing with Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, uh, that was a top-selling song back in the day, uh, years ago, but that's the theme song to hell. I did it my way. And guys, that, and that is doing it your way is, is the way for God, for you, for you to receive less grace, <laughs> for you to receive uh, resistance from God, doing it your way. And just say, God, I'm doing your will your way. Praise God. If, if we need more grace, then the number one enemy in our lives needs to be pride. Well, you know, uh, uh, resisting God. And let me tell you what, pride is not just, um, you know, I'm better than somebody else. I'm, you know, I'm I, where you compare yourself to somebody else and say, you know, I'm more spiritual than them or I've got more money than them or I'm smarter than them or I've got a bigger house than them or you know, or I, I can I can play football or basketball better than them, or I'm stronger than them, I'm more beautiful than them. 
I can't really say that about anybody, but uh, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. But um, uh, you know what? 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 The one one aspect of pride is when God speaks to you about doing something, gives you an assignment, and that you don't feel adequate for, and you say, "Oh no, Lord, you know, I." I Man, I can't go to Bible college. I can't do that. I can't, I can't start my own business. Lord, you know I can't go on that missions trip. No, Lord, you know I can't give that big offering. I, I, I can't, I can't uh, go help that pastor uh, and, and serve in a, in a leadership role. I can't do that because you know, Lord, uh, I don't have the experience. Lord, you know uh, I don't have the money. Lord, you know... I don't have the time. Lord, you know um, I don't have the skill. You know, all of these things. Well, poor God, he, he didn't know all that when he asked you to do that, did he? <laughs> did he ask you to do that? Did, and did he know how much money you had? Did he know how old you were? Did he know how much skill you had? Did he know how much experience you had? Guys, uh, he, he knew that. And when you and I say, no, Lord... No Lord is an oxymoron. It's a moronic ox. Okay? No Lord is pride. And, and a lot of us think that there's some virtue in arguing with God about something He's asked us to do. That's pride, my brother and sister. Humility at its simplest form is, is saying, yes, Lord. It's agreeing with God. Humility is at least two things that I've experienced and, and seen in the Word. Humility is agreeing with God and depending on God. And so if I'm humble, I'm just saying, all right, Lord, you told me to do this. I didn't think I could do it, but I'll just say, yes, Lord, I can do that. Yes, Lord, I can go there. Yes, Lord, I can start that business. Yes, Lord, I can start that ministry. Yes, Lord, I can give that big offering. I can help that pastor. I can help that ministry. Yes, I can do it, Lord. I can go on that mission trip. Listen, the issue is, my brother and sister, what has God revealed to you, first of all? And second of all, are you humble? Are you teachable? Are you willing? It's the willing and obedient that eat the good of the land. Are you agreeing with God? Or are you resisting Him? God resists the proud. <laughs> and so there's someone that's watching. You feel God's spoken to you uh, to, to do some, some significant work, and yet uh, you're over 70 years old, and, and you're saying, well, you know, God, I'm too old for that. Well, you know, God, poor God, He didn't know about that when He asked you to do it, did He? And I've got a verse for you, Psalm 39.5. says, your age is as nothing. <laughs> So put that in your I'm too old pipe and smoke it. That your, your, your age is as nothing before the Lord. John at, uh, had been, John in the, at the, was on the Isle of Patmos in, in, in the book of Revelation. He was 90 years old. He could have started the t-shirt factory that, that said, been there, done that, heard that, know that. And I mean, he pastored the largest church in the world he, at one time. He he had walked with Jesus. He'd seen miracles. And now he's in, a, he's in a place of old age, 90 years old. He's in a place of limitation, a place of isolation. But he wasn't washed up. God had a new assignment for him, the book of Revelation. And I'm speaking to someone right now. You've, you've agreed with a lie that you're too old. Listen, it may not, you may not do what you did in the past, but God's got new assignments for you. And if you're going to draw on the grace... To accomplish that, you need to do two things. Agree with God. Just say, yes, Lord. I can do that. We'll do that, Lord. Uh, or, or, and number two, depend on Him. That's humility, and that's what draws out grace, my brother and sister. If you'll do that, I'm telling you, some, someone's watching right now. There's a woman that's watching right now that, that you felt inadequate. You don't, you don't have uh, all the education or all the experience that but, and, and yet God's asked you to do something and someone in authority has asked you to do something and you've, you've shirked back from it. You, you've resisted it because you didn't feel qualified. 
listen, guys, it, uh, uh, ma'am, I shouldn't say guys because <laughs> it's a word for a lady right now, but the, it's, it's, not our, it's not our experience. It's not our competency. It's not our ability. It's not uh, our education that makes us competent to do what God asks us to do. It's our humility. And you'll draw on God's grace if you'll agree with Him and if you, and if you will depend on Him. And so just write me, uh, gregmore.com, write me and let me know uh, God is, who, who that is, God, that God has spoken to you and, and helped you. So um, the third thing, the third thing that will help draw out more grace is this dirty 10 letter word called submission. Okay, it says, therefore, verse 7 of James 4, therefore submit to God and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Okay, you cannot, it's impossible to submit to God without being willing to submit to authorities that he has placed in your life. Okay, you can't, you, you can't submit to God if you're not willing to submit to various authorities that he's, that he's put in your life. And in, in Luke chapter 2, it's the story of Jesus when he stayed back at the temple when he was 12 years old and his parents went on thinking he was with them and then they found after a couple of days he wasn't with the, with the group and they came back looking for him and they finally found him in the temple uh, teaching and answering questions, asking questions of, of the leaders and then his mother came to him uh, and it, after three days and and so when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said to him son why have you done this to us look your father and I have sought you anxiously and he said to them why do you seek me didn't you know that I must be about my father's business but they did not understand the statements which he spoke to them then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them but his mother kept all these things in her heart and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor. And that word favor in the Greek is the word grace. It's the word charis. So he increased in wisdom, stature, and grace with God and man. Now, you know what a lot of us would have done if we would have been that, in that situation? We would have used the God card. And we would have said, well, Mom, you know, you understand, I understand you care about me, but... Now, I've, I've got to be about my father's business. Y'all go on home. I'll be there later. And that's what a lot of Christians do today. They use the God card to uh, fail to, to, as an excuse not to submit themselves to other leaders in their lives. You, you haven't begun to submit to someone or submit to God until you're willing to submit to someone in authority who asks you to do something that you don't want to do. It's the, it's the willing and obedient that eat the good of the Lamb, my brother and sister. And you cannot access, fully access God, God's grace until you submit your heart like Jesus did to authorities in His life. And I'm not talking about being a doormat. I'm not talking about uh, submitting to someone in authority who asks you to violate the Word or to sin. But outside of that, I'm, I'm telling you a principle, a, a, a primary principle that will draw out more grace for you. And this is where a lot of Christians fail to draw fully on God's grace is they're failing. They're selectively obeying. They're selectively rebelling. <laughs> and I'm telling you here, Jesus subjected himself. He submitted to his parents. He didn't use the God card to stay there at the temple he followed them, and the results of that is that he grew. He grew in wisdom, he grew in stature, and he grew in grace. Listen, my brother and sister, he wants you to grow in wisdom, he wants you to grow in maturity or Christ-likeness, and he wants you to grow in grace. That's the vision of my ministry for you. And I can't communicate that without communicating this principle uh, of submission. Listen, uh, let God work on your heart and open your heart to be willing to submit 
to some leader in your life. How you treat leaders in your life is exactly how you'll be treated when you get there. I release to you today more grace as you get, receive revelation from the Lord, as you walk in humility, as you submit to leaders in your life. Great grace to you today. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to this broadcast of Wisdom for Living. Today's teaching, A Heart Established in Grace, is available in a 10-disc CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive containing both audio and 4K video. Go to gregmore.com and order your copy today. Discover how to unlock the hidden wisdom of God and make good decisions for your life when you read Greg's brand new book, Walking in Wisdom. In this book, you will learn practical steps to help you reap the benefits of godly wisdom as Pastor Greg shares from over 40 years of walking out biblical truths and principles. Get your copy of Greg's new book by going to gregmore.com today. Did you know, my brother and sister, that partners catch more fish? Uh, I want to encourage you to uh, partner with Greg Moore Ministries. We're, we're going to catch more fish together. We're going to reach a greater harvest together. We're going to pray for one another, connect with one another, and see God, abundance of God's grace be manifested in each other's lives. I'd love for you to check out uh, gregmore.com and partner with us today. If you've been blessed by today's teaching, we would like you to consider partnering with Greg Moore Ministries. Your partnership will help expand this broadcast around the world to give people the opportunity to grow in wisdom, Christ-likeness, and grace. Go to gregmore.com and become a partner today. Remember, you can order resources or partner with our ministry at gregmore.com or by writing to us at P.O. Box 7702, Woodland Park, Colorado, 80863. We look forward to hearing from you today. Join us again tomorrow for more Wisdom for Living. He could have used the God card because he, he told them clearly, didn't you know I have to be about my father's business? And so, but he didn't do that. He submitted to them. And then, then it said the result of that was he increased in wisdom. He increased in stature. And he increased in favor with God and man. And that word favor is the Greek word charis. It's, a, it's where we get the word grace. So my brother and sister, if you want to increase in grace, if you want more grace in your life, uh, make it a point to, uh, and a goal in your life to get revelation knowledge out of the Word yourself. It's like drilling for, for oil or water. You may have to drill down for a while before, it, before you hit a gusher, but man, once you hit, once you, once you hit strike oil, man, that's gonna, it's, it's going to flow. And so I encourage you, stay with the Word and let God reveal Himself to you. That's tomorrow on Wisdom for Living.